And Dr. Knoxville said, you're allowed to take all that instead of Adderall and Klonopin. I'm like, well, who are you to say? This is what the doctors say I need. So I've had people ask me, do you, uh, have you tried to get through to BAM? You know, and the truth is, so what would be the point of a contract of $5 million if I'm not around? Hey man, do you need any like water or any food or anything? No! You sure? No, I need you to get away from me. Do you want any? No, I want some money. Okay. No! 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 no. So, Jack has four. Project, what happened? Well, basically, um, it started off with Bam. You, you, you've been out there on TMZ being a jackass, and and you're almost like a liability. Um, I'm like, wait a minute. Are you telling me that I'm too jackass for jackass? I went to rehab for Adderall and alcohol, and I went there thinking I was going to do 30 days, but they insisted that I do 90 days. Uh-huh. And I'm like, all right, is, is this on my bill or yours? Well, it's on mine. I'm like, well, all right, I don't want to do it, but I'll do it because you give me $5 million every time we do a movie or more. When I go in for Adderall and alcohol, I come out on Zoloft, Visterol, Bipropion, Lithium, Concerta, Propanolol, Seroquel, Contrae, Trazodone, Vivitrol, Naltrexone, Latuda, Zeprexa, Lexapro, Abilify, Walbutrin, Raylar, and Adderall, because I have ADD, and Klonopin. And Dr. Knoxville said, you're allowed to take all that instead of Adderall and Klonopin. I'm like, well, who are you to say? This is what the doctors say I need. Right, it's Bam Margera here in Hollywood. I'm with uh, Keanu Reeves. What's up? And uh, we are... Editing right now the uh, Spray Allen, aka Sublime video that we just shot. Spur of the moment, my real estate rich buddy Jeb Cardi said that he was uh, demolishing a house, and if we wanted to go in there and do anything we want, except light it on fire, we're more than welcome. So we uh, all drove up from SoCal and invited everybody last minute, and it worked out pretty beautifully. So Bam obviously has had his fights. We've right. seen it, we've seen it recently. You know, we see Bam after Ryan Dunn passed. You know, you right. guys, good friend Ryan. It seemed like that had a monumental effect on Bam and his personality. Not it's saying scary that, and sad to be well, honest. Well, right yeah. now, it's like uh, some people ask because because Knoxville, you know, organized an intervention and locked me up in a psychiatric ward, and I kind of you know got enough clarity in there to realize, wow, I need help, and and I went from the psych ward to rehab, and I've been sober ever since. Um, that's kind of fortunate for me that because you can't make someone else decide. So I've had people ask me, do you, uh, have you tried to get through to BAM? You know, and the truth is you can't you force people into it. I have an analogy for recovery and, and I, I, I'm kind of proud I came up with this one, <laughs> right? It's like uh, committing to recovery. It's like getting in a swimming pool. Now, if you go up to a swimming pool and you dip your toe into it, the water feels cold. You know, like if you dip sure. your toe in, it feels cold. And, and if you think you're going to go and walk in gradually to a, to the swimming pool, you know, you're probably just not because you're going to take a, like a couple of steps in. It's going to get to your ankles. And you're going to be like, okay, this is cold. I'm out of here. Right, right. The way to get into that pool, just like the way to get into recovery, is just to commit and fully jump in. Now, like the truth is, like with Bam, and he's what he's worried about is like, oh, but, it, but, uh, but it's not going to be fun. If I get sober, it's going to be boring. Like, I'm not going to have fun. I want to have fun. I'm sure. Like, like really diving into recovery, it shocks your system. You know, I'm not going to pretend that, that it doesn't. But the fact about it is, is that if you're motivated to it, if you really commit to it, and if you just jump into that pool, if you just start paddling around, it's incredible how, how quickly when you're in the water, you think to yourself, wow, you know, like turns out this really isn't that cold. How fast you acclimate to yes. it. You know, when you're in that Absolutely. swimming pool, when you're in that swimming pool, you think, man, I can't believe I just thought this was cold like just a, a couple minutes ago, and now I'm perfectly comfortable in here. And it's a perfect analogy, and it goes a step further that you just can't go around pushing people into pools and expecting them to stay in. Yeah. So, so I've never tried to. I've never tried to push Bam in. All I can really did Johnny push you in the pool? He, he did. Yeah. He did. And, and, uh, and I, I recognized my need to be in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They feel but, good. It feels good. Uh, but Bam is doing better. He's, Bam's doing better these days. And, and uh, you know, I'm not trying to bag on him and say that, that he's in a tough yeah, place. Yeah, I don't think I anybody think, takes it that way. I just think that, uh, you know, I look at my life and, and, you know, I was saying during the break that, that with alcoholism and addiction, 
unlike any other disease, when you treat it and when you recover from it, you're actually better in a lot of cases, better than you were before, because were it not for me crashing and burning and getting into uh, this way of life, I wouldn't have, um, I wouldn't have ever been concerned about, you know, my spiritual connection right. and, and uh, you know, all of this, like I'm, 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 I came into recovery on defense, you know, trying to, to get through a day without being so just humiliated, shameful, you know, just the, the, the regret, the remorse, the shame. It was really, really bad what I was up to. And, and I came in on defense just trying to stay away from that drink or drug. And now, like, as a result of the work that I've done in the program, I, it's not defense anymore at all. It's just pure offense. It's like, how, how good can my life be? You know, back to the BAM thing quickly is, do you find it difficult? Can Dude, you I just ate it all. <laughs> and, you, and you don't have any problem with that? It's and vegan, there's no Bruh. Can you still be Bam's friend knowing that he still uses whatever? It could be just drinking alcohol. Right. Can you still be around him yeah. while that's happening? You, there's no weird kind of odd invisible barrier I there, Steve? I, I think it's been weird for him. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. like, he, he, he's certainly dodged me and not responded to calls and stuff, even though I wasn't trying to pre right, right. preach to but him. But he's going to assume that. Yeah, I mean, with, when you're getting loaded, the last thing you want to do is hang out with sober people. Oh, I, yeah. know. <laughs> I know, I know, I don't. And, and, and then it led to suicidal tendencies on all 18 medications that I was on. I'm like, well, what's the point of a $5 million contract that I have to walk on eggshells and jump through your hoops, which is already impossible, yeah. um, to, to obey if I'm dead? What the f***? Yeah. Is, is the point of having the money if I'm not here anymore because I was going to die of a or suicidal thoughts. Do you want production for putting you through all that, or are you going to take It me? was the definition of torture. Yeah. They tortured me. I've been on Adderall for 13 years, two a day, 20 milligrams, and, and they don't want me to take it anymore. I find myself sleeping all day. Well, I found a loose one in my car on my road trip, and I took it. Yeah. One. You're, are you there planning on taking action against... Well, I mean, I didn't want it to come down to this, but, I mean, I have no choice. They keep saying... Bam, we love you, and it's not about the movie. Um, it is about the movie, because that's all I've been wanting to do for 10 years, and now you made me jump through hoop for two years, and, and I'm walking around chain-smoking, realizing that there's nothing I could do to please you. It's supposed to be a reunion of getting the band back together to pay our respects to Ryan Dunn. Yeah. And he's rolling around in his grave saying, why, Jeff, why? Weight gain, dizziness, sore muscles, I couldn't skate, erectile dysfunction, balding, uh, fatigue, and suicidal tendencies. So if, uh, if suicidal tendencies was the final result to 18 different medications, it was pretty on the brink of happening. So what would be the point of a contract of $5 million if I'm not around? So uh, there you have that. <laughs> Rock and roll. Can I have this? Yeah. Oh, uh, Bam. Oh, uh. Hot I, here. This is the thing. It breathe. was a little bit hot. Come on, guys. Hey, I'm calling the order. You guys are you guys are a little bit too mean. All right. Well, welcome to hoarders. I am. I'm really stoked that you're like really interested in, in the projects that I have going on. Um, number one, the main one at the very moment is the documentary that you've seen me talk about, you've heard me tell you about, and you'll start to see me posting about. This documentary has been in the making for 20 years. You know, originally when they came to me with the concept for the documentary, I was in the peak of my addiction and all I heard them say is, we'll pay you cash on hand per interview. So all I thought of was, fuck yeah, that's great heroin money. <laughs> so there is no shortage of film. There's actually an abundance of film because of the cash. They were paying me per interview. I would call them every day like, yo, you want to film? You want to film? So they got like the lows of lows, me strung out to the gill on the streets of Baltimore City to some pretty good times in my life as well. Um, but what I was not privy to or knew nothing about was that they had a meeting that I was not included or invited to uh, and that meeting centered and surrounded in how they were going to end this documentary with my death because no one thought that I would able, be able to ever get sober, let alone stay sober. So not only did I defy odds, I defied logic. I did just that. I got sober. I stayed sober and the ending of this movie took on a life of its own and it got really big really quick. Um, 
and 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 some hand it changed some hands and and now joe franz is the producer of the documentary and he's doing the editing and and we are just so busy and uh i'm not nervous about it i i welcome uh i, I welcome who i am today and where i came from and if i didn't come from where i came from i would not be who i am today which is a man of honesty dignity and pride in a couple months i'll be god willing celebrating six years of continual sobriety um, right now, I'm just focusing on the projects at hand, which are opening this next recovery house and finishing this documentary. Um, so until then, my friend, stay tuned because we got some rad sh coming. So the best gig I've ever done was probably uh, the Yellow Wolf Eminem concert in Glasgow, Scotland. 80,000 people. I only did one song with Yellow Wolf. It was uh, Billy Crystal, but it was pretty insane. And after that, I had the pleasure to go to Glasgow county jail for um <laughs> showing up looking like a hobo at a five-star restaurant or a five-star hotel checking in and um they said that i had to get out of there because i was covered in paint and uh <laughs> i looked like total sh so um i started cussing up a storm until i got arrested best concert that i've ever been to probably may 2000 uh i saw him play at london garage it was a small gig but it was really awesome um, and that might be a tie with, uh, I recently just saw Amon Amarth play in San Francisco, and that was a really good concert, although I just got out of rehab for 90 days, so I was excited to do anything other than be in rehab, so I was just extra excited to get out, but seeing Amon Amarth play was really f***ing rad. Rock and roll, Mon. Mm, dude, this is such a delicious burger, dude. It's vegan, too? No way! Seriously. What's that? Yeah, man, sure. <laughs> all right. Dude, I just ate it all. <laughs>